So let's talk about pers your, your personal watercrafts hull. All right, here, this is a really rough basic design, but I just wanted to kind of make it a point. Okay, so at rest, idling, just sitting there with the engine off, your hull is gonna sink to a specific level, regardless of what brand or model it is, okay? That's your at rest, that's your at rest line. This blue line represents the water at rest on the hull, okay? And then if you were to measure from the very bottom of your hull, what boaters might call your keel, all right, to that water line, that is your draft. That is how much, how much hull is in the water. That's your draft, okay? However many inches it is. That, that's at rest, that's how, how much draft you have. So let's say you get on the throttle, you start kicking it up to 45, 50 miles an hour, all right? You're bringing the ski up to plane. That's your planing speed. Well, at plane, your ski, the hull is gonna rise out of the water, okay? And we talked about this before, what makes a good offshore rough water hull design is though that those that planing surface or planing strakes all right the designs that go into the hull shape it wants to get more boat out of the water and the reason you want to get more boat out of the water is because of drag this if, if your if your ski went full speed or tried to go full speed with that much draft that is a ton of drag right there all right, you're just dragging all that through the water. Now, let's go to the point of Kawasaki Ultras. All right, Kawasaki Ultra has a really true deep V hull, and it runs all the way down the damn thing. Why well, you see Yamahas and Sea Dews going 80, 85 with just a tune and some small parts is because they have a very flat hull. All right, their hull doesn't look like this triangle. Their hull goes whoop, it's real, real gentle. So when it goes to speed, it pops right out of the water real easy. Cowie has a ton of the hull still left in the water, has a bunch of draft. That draft means drag, okay? So the goal is to get, if you can, get as little draft as possible. Now, have you guys ever been to boat races? I'm not talking jet ski races, boat races, you, jet boat races, cracker box races. Some of those boat races, there's literally no hull in the water. It's literally just the outboard that's in the water. All right. They have no hull in the water. <laughs> it's You can see these, they're going 130 miles an hour and it's just, it is just the outboard and the prop shooting up. 30 foot roost out of the back. All right. They are running on very little surface tension. There's very, very little surface tension on those race boats. Okay. So Cowies and Cowies have the big draft. They have a lot of drag. Yamahas and Sea-Doo's do not have a lot of draft. Now here's where it gets funny. You guys with an RX TX versus guys with an RX PX, who's faster? The TX is faster. Why? Less draft. Less draft. The PX has a more aggressive hull. It's got a more of a T. It's got a really deep keel and it runs longer. So that's why guys who are racing, they're getting RX TXs going faster than RX PXs. And that's because of the hull. It's draft that is slowing down your ski, all right? Why you don't see Cowies going 87 miles an hour with a tune is because those boys are cutting the water like a World War II battleship. <laughs> got it? Does that make sense? All right. So at plane, you got this very little amount of hull in the water. Surface tension means that all of this area, all of this area while you're in while you're in motion is dragging it's, it's dragging it's it's trying to slow it down 
Why why is this important and what and, and do the manufacturers understand this? The manufacturers understand this. I just saw one of you guys talking about shark gills on the RXPX, and that's literally my next point. All right. What was the big difference in hull design between um the 2012 to 2020, well, 2020 RXPX versus the 2021 RXPX. Yes, they changed a lot of the pump inlet. The differences between the RXPXs, obviously around the pump, but what was the big thing they started they started telling everyone about? Was the shark gills. The shark gills. Oh my gosh, it's got shark gills. Oh, it's so awesome, shark gills. All right. What the hell do the shark gills do? Okay. So the shark gills, what the shark gills did was that the RXPX and the way it designed was the way it was designed previously was that it was meant to go and have as much surface tension as possible and to bite in a hairpin corner so that it only wanted to snap turns. It wanted to snap hard, hard, hard. That was the design of that ski. All right. In fact, if you looked at the if you looked at the hull and the way it was, it actually is concave. All right. It literally is creating pockets. It wanted suction as much as humanly possible. Well, the problem was that there was a bunch of non-racers going out and buying the RXPX and then getting high-sided and ejected off of it because they were trying to do slow S-turns down the river, just fully farting around. And that ski's like, I don't want to do that. I want to do this. And the, screw, the ski's kind of like, screw you. I'm going to do that. And the casual rider is just kind of like, do, 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 do. and it would bite and chuck them. It would. And it, it, you could kind of finagle it with sponsons and you could kind of finagle it with an intake grate, but you couldn't undo the hull. The hull did what it wanted to do. And it was designed to do something. And what it did was cut corners. So they changed and they gave it those shark gills. Well, what did that shark gill do? The shark gill broke up the surface tension. It literally broke it up. So that it wasn't one big flat, you know, like taking your hand across the carpet and going and burning your hand, but it was designed to break up that surface tension. Okay. Now an RXPX with a passenger on the back can go around corners nice and gentle and smooth. Just itty bitty. All right. And someone made a good point that it was also for offshore. Because the offshore guys were having a hell of a time just wrestling it, doing Aqua X. That, too, helped it out. So the shark gills are intentionally designed to break up surface tension. Okay? Especially because where are the shark gills on an RXPX? They're not down here. They're up here. All right? The shark gills are right around there. Why? Because the top speed guy is already down here. The top speed guy, the racer, he's already there. But when he goes full bore into a corner, when he goes completely kicked into a corner, that ski lays over and suddenly you got contact up here. Now we got water up here. So you got to break up that surface tension. Number two is the casual rider... He's not riding here. He's riding around here. Okay? So the casual guy who's got a passenger who's fully farting around on the river, they need that to break up the surface tension. You get me? Does that make sense? Everyone on board? Good. Hey, guys. Thanks for hanging out. This clip was taken from our weekly podcast that we record here every Sunday night at 8 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. If you want to watch the whole video, you can go to the Watercraft Journal's YouTube channel, go to Playlists, and then click on Live Sessions. You're going to see it there. Otherwise, go ahead and leave a like, a comment, and definitely subscribe to the channel. It helps us grow. And again, thanks again for watching our videos, and we hope to see you soon.